There are states in this country and insurance companies that say, you know, to get a hip replacement here costs, let's say, $50,000. If we send you to Malaysia to get a hip replacement, it's only $4,000. So we want all the Americans that we're covering here in our state or on our health plan, we're going to uh, want them to go to Malaysia. So what would you say? Is that yeah. good, bad? What should be so the parameters on that? What I would say is that, first of all, currently, if you're a self-insured employer, there's almost no restrictions on you doing this. If you're, even if the state has insurance regulation, most of that is preempted as to self-insured employers, which are most of the big employers in the U.S. So what's wrong with that system? One is that there's no provision that says it has to be uh, a JCI or other kind of accredited institution. There's no provision for, for getting information disclosure about the quality of care there. Uh, there's no provision or requiring the foreign hospital to agree to arbitrate claims or subject itself to medical malpractice liability should something go wrong. Very hard to sue a foreign hospital in the U.S. And there's no attempt to regulate what effect those foreign hospitals have on the healthcare infrastructure and access to healthcare in these places where people are going. So in my view, what I'd really like to see is probably the federal government get in the business of trying to approve or pre-approve or certify or rely on third-party certifications of foreign hospitals such that insurance companies, employers have to jump through some of these hoops and ameliorate these kinds of situations for patients. And the last thing to say on this line is the other two things are follow-up care, what is the quality of follow-up care, the transmission of documents, how able that is, and the question of transmission of bugs, so multi-drug resistant bug transmission. I know you spoke about Ebola here, and Ebola, of course, is big and scary, but actually much more common is the transmission of bugs that are uh, often resistant to most of our uh, antibiotics and the like, and to end up costing the system ex a lot of money, if not a lot of lives, when people come back with these bugs. So we have to think a little bit about the infrastructure for detecting them and for also dealing with them. What do you feel are the, so the ethical tensions here? Yeah, so one of the ethical tensions is to say, when I uh, travel abroad in general and I have effects on the place I'm going, when are those effects that I as an individual need to internalize, right? So this is a little bit like carbon offsets in some ways. Should there be eco-friendly, the equivalent of eco-friendly or fair trade coffee? Do I have a moral obligation to consume only in a way that creates the least bit, you know, maybe it's making a contribution to the healthcare systems of these countries. As the U.S. government, do we have uh, uh, obligations in terms of regulating uh, where people go or maybe even taxing the system and making up for some of the ill effects on foreign countries when our patients go uh, abroad? And then thinking ethically uh, about when the state may limit our liberty to travel or impose its law when we go abroad. So coming up with a more robust theory of when we carry our state's law on our back in a way that's morally acceptable versus the idea that the state is becoming fascistic and totalitarian. And I often think about this a little bit like the, the Merchant of Venice, that there's Venice where a deal is a deal, and there's Belmont where is a place of love and familial relationships. And there's an idea that the way that life in Venice is tolerable is that you can always go to Belmont for a weekend or a week and you can escape. In a world where you always carry all the law on your back, there is no escape, there is no exit, if I can sound like Jean-Paul Sartre. I guess you can give up your citizenship and we can talk about that too. And how do we view that world? Is this ability to do things illegal at home in a foreign destination a kind of important freedom or is it instead a kind of victimization of the people there and in what circumstances?